Okay, back again for the pellet knife snow segment of painting this mountain. Okay, part two, and this is the one I'm gonna try and communicate, try and show you how I paint, achieve this result with a pellet knife and a brush. We'll zoom in, so you can have a quick look. Getting that sort of thing there, which, you know, you make the decision. Looks fairly realistic and achievable. Let's hope it's achievable. I give it my best shot to explain to you how I do it. Let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, my palette knife snow. Here we go. With the palette knife. First of all, why do I use the palette knife? Well, for me, it was just easier. It just came more natural than using a brush, even though I do use a brush and you're seeing me use a brush there now. So a lot of the times I'm using the brush, say in this painting, I largely use the brush to do the line where the top of the mountain, the horizon line where it meets the sky. That's kind of a nice smooth line. So there I'm grabbing a synthetic flat brush. That's what I always say if I'm trying to make a nice line, a synthetic flat brush is the best thing for it. So you'll see me using the brush there. Otherwise, generally using the palette knife. And my theory behind this, why it's easier for me, um, because snow is something that's either there or it's not there. You know, it's either there's either snow there or it's melted. And with a palette knife, when you put on paint with a palette knife, it's either there or it's not there. So, you know, a brush can do a feathered line and a nice blended line. So, I'm not saying you can't do it with a brush, but for me, it came a lot easier with a palette knife. You've seen me using the palette knife always on an angle, or generally always on an angle. So the snow, generally, again, sits in the crevices of the mountain first. Sits in the crevices a lot, and they are generally coming down the mountain on an angle, either left or right, however it's running. Look at my mountain there. Look at all of those, you can generally see the shadows, and they're all coming down on the angle, either left or right. So the snow sits a lot of times, or well, that's where I start anyway, is in those crevices. So I'm using that pa uh, palette knife on that angle. You also saw me just using a bit of masking tape there to mask up the part where I didn't want to put the snow. That's just that's just common sense, I think. That nice crisp edge, kept that with some masking tape. So always coming. Unless I'm doing, like you just saw me doing snow that was sort of sitting um, maybe in a plateau where I'll be using the palette knife more horizontally. Maybe there was a bluff, maybe a really bluffy cliff area, a bit of snow's hanging in there, that's when I could use the palette knife more vertically. So you see, I hope that explains how I sort of go about using I'm also following a reference photo for this one. So um, I can make up snow just out of my imagination. So you could, but my advice is start with a nice reference photo. It's just a little bit easier. And then you can match your color. So the color, my snow that's in the sunlight here is virtually white. Okay, in this particular painting, the snow that's in the sunlight is virtually white. The shadow snow, the blue stuff, you can see is almost this color of the sky. Sort of like the mid color of my sky gradient. So there is a slight difference when it meets the horizon. When it's against the sky, you can see a little bit of a difference, but you can almost get away with making it exactly the same color as the sky, almost. You might just dial it back. If it's blue, how do you dial blue paint back? Or go to the opposite side of the color wheel and add a touch of orange just a little drop of orange to your blue paint, that'll just dial it back enough to make it look, you know, not as bright as the sky. So in there, making that crisp edge with the brush again, as I come down. Also note that beneath the shadow snow, beneath the blue snow, is Shadow Mountain. The shadow color of the mountain and the sunlit area on the other side there, on the right hand side, that's the sunlight is already hitting that mountain. Well, hopefully I'm giving the impression the sunlight's hitting that mountain by that more sort of um, ochre colour there. So you've got to pre-plan this if you want it to look realistic. And that's a nice shot of me getting in there. 
Often when I use the pellet knife, um, using it, I'm right-handed. Often, if you see me in the nitty-gritty, I'm actually getting there. I'm actually um, steadying my hand with my left hand. I steady my right hand with my left hand, like you see me do there, steadying the pellet knife. And I can actually paint quite small with that pellet knife. Quite detailed, sorry. I can do quite detailed snow with that pellet knife. So you want that fragmented look. One of the easier things to do is actually paint less snow. Less snow is easier to do than more snow. See, I'm doing quite a lot of snow here. It's quite a blanket of snow up there. So it's actually probably, if you're starting out, I would suggest less snow is easier. And don't go and put too much on at once. Don't put as much as on as I'm putting on here. Just scratch around with a little bit and you'll get a result. That's why it's quite exciting because I see people that come to my studio here and I've taught quite a few people paint something that looks like snow. And it took me ages at the start to work it out, but now people can sort of get, they're painting something within 15 minutes that looks a bit like snow with this technique. Notice. Pitch is a little bit more sharper there, so that's good. Now, using the tooth of the canvas, so the weave of the canvas, the weave of the canvas is called the tooth. And when you drag it down there, see that? It almost, you, you can just, I think this Bob Ross style actually, you can just take some pellet knife, take a little bit of snow on it, and if you just drag it across the weave of that canvas, it'll, um, the individual tooth of the canvas pick up the paint, and it just looks like a dusting of snow. It's so simple. It's very simple, you can, it's not hard to do at all. What is actually hard, probably the advanced thing here I'm doing is I'm putting the blue snow, the shadow snow, and the sunlit snow on at the same time, the white and the blue. When I started out, I started just putting the blue snow on first, and then coming back and putting the white highlights on afterwards. So that's maybe, that's a good little tip. Notice the angle of that palette knife as I went of those mountains there. So I'm not afraid to put a bit of paint on. To use the palette knife almost like a spatula. Almost spooning the paint on there. But you don't have to do that at the beginning. You can start really tentatively and just work into this. Copy your photo using the palette knife. I'm only a lot of times I'm only really loading the, not the tip of the pellet knife, but just the first, maybe the first half inch of the pellet knife. On the one side that I use to hit the canvas, on the right hand side of the pellet knife, I'm only loading yeah, the half inch, the first half inch of the pellet knife I'm loading. And I prefer that pellet knife, that, that pointed version. Now you're going to see me shortly. I actually take a little bit of snow off, or paint, paint off, it's not snow. I take a bit of paint off here soon. That's because I don't like too much texture in my distant part of my painting. Um, I like that texture more up close. I actually start to scoop, here we go now. It's just scooping some of that texture off the painting. So, bearing in mind, and the other thing too, is I can only do this technique wet over dry. I cannot paint the snow with palette knife on a painting wet on wet, like plain here. I have to let it dry. It has to be the indirect method. So I have to let the, um, the base dry and then come back with the snow over top. So now I can, I can actually take a little bit of that, that heavy texture off and I, I just like the look. And I scratch around with the palette knife a little bit. I describe texture like I think the human eye really notices texture very easily. Like so, if you paint a white wall in your house white, and you get one drop of white paint on, you can sort of almost see that anywhere in the room. We 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 can see texture really well. So I like texture in my painting a little bit. I like to build it up in the foreground, and I like to not have so much texture in the distant and. For me, you know, snow, a lot of times snow is just a blanket of snow. 
there's not a lot of hard craggy texture within snow well, depending on what sort of mountain it's sitting on but you'll see me doing this now but then you're going to see me come back and now reinstating some of those dark so this is now the next day i let the snow dry so that snows no this is not the next day yet the next day is coming very soon um the thing is about well, if you're taking that paint off just be careful about you know just how you're taking it off to be honest that takes a little bit of practice like you can't you can't pull up wet paint into your um sky for instance that wouldn't be good It'd be catastrophic really but you can always wipe it off that's the beauty of oil paint but anyway so now now this is the next day well this is once that snow dried which was actually about a week later because that white paint the lighter the paint the longer it takes to dry because it attracts less um, less heat and right now it's winter in New Zealand and that snow takes that white paint takes about a week to dry so now coming back and just reinstating some of the darks and the lights up into that snow around the edges because I did lose some of it when I wiped some of the paint off as you can imagine it was wet wiping wet paint off. you're going to smear things a little bit so some of that smeared look I'm just coming back and just reinstating with the brush and doing a little bit extra along the way I tried to just keep it snow but you know the way I like to work over my whole canvas at one time inevitably I see I'm dipping down starting to do some more of the mountain but there'll be part three in part three I'll just finish off this whole thing go over the whole the snow will be done but everything else will need it's just a little bit of uh, going over again and do that foreground reinstating some of the blues in the snow with the brush nearly all of this was done with the brush but I hope that makes sense I hope I, I spoke a lot a few points there using the palette knife on an angle following a good reference photo when you can matching your color against the sky color the, the, the shadow snow color so if it was a gray sky the snow the shadow snow would be more gray blue it's blue using that canvas texture to help you create that look of snow and also remembering it's like I said it's easier to paint just a little bit of snow when you're starting out rather than a whole lot it's always funny there's things that are easy to paint a little bit of and there's some things that's easier to just paint a whole lot but that's a whole nother subject for another day actually so this is just about it we're nearly finished here now um, remember to like and subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying the videos and obviously going to bring you part three and more videos coming up maybe another wave very soon but yeah this is how it finished up so i'll leave you with a few close-up photos of how it looks close up and how it's coming along this one still not finished a little bit more to go but that's pretty much the snow taken care of happy painting have a go at doing some snow with the palette knife you might enjoy it